Amy Davis here. I want to share with you a word I have from the Lord. This word is for the remnant of the Lord's people, those that are uh, contending for the things of the kingdom of God. Here's what I heard. We were in, I actually first heard it when we were in Lancaster. I prayed for a couple there. I went to them and I laid my hands on their feet. I saw a picture of that, putting my hands on their feet and beginning uh, to honor them for where they've gone in the earth. And then I felt like the Lord said to prophesy over them where they're going now in the realm of the spirit, in the eternal realm in this day. And as I thought about that word, I, I'm, I was really stirring in me. And the Lord began to speak to me, this is for my people. Now, I found out later that those people had been missionaries. They had literally gone all over the world. Those feet had gone all over the world and they had blessed many. And I feel like that's the same message for many of you. You've done many things for the kingdom of God. Maybe you were a missionary. Maybe you were a mom, a wife. Maybe you work in a grocery store, at a gas station, a janitor. Whatever it is, you've done everything that you've done for the sake of the kingdom of God, blessing whoever's right there in front of you. You've done your best to love well. And I feel like the Lord has said that season you did a good job. So maybe some of the things you didn't do perfectly, don't think on those things. Right now, just appreciate, wow, I see what the Lord brought me through in that day. I feel like the word for you now is that I'm honoring you. I'm honoring you for the things you've done in the world, the things that you have done on the land, the things that you did on the earth. I'm honoring you for it. But now it's a new day and I want to prophesy to you where you're going in the realm of the spirit. We're going to talk about the things eternal. It's time to talk about eternity. It's time to talk about eternity. We have Paul Keith has been teaching on the seed of God that's in us, that eternal power, that eternity is within us. And we're um, time to talk about it now. I had a dream just the other day and I, and I, we were getting ready to really begin to discuss eternity, the eternal realm on earth, even as it is in heaven to access the realm of the Lord and demonstrate it here on the earth for the purpose of bringing in a harvest, but the, for the purpose of our identity and destiny. And in my dream, what I saw was that all of creation is excited to talk about eternity, to talk about the realm, the eternal realm of God. Creation is excited. I saw demonstrations of excitement in all of creation. And the people included, the people were excited. There's a remnant of people excited to talk about the realm of eternity. What a beautiful thing. You know, we, we talked in our table on Sunday night. We talked about this realm of eternity, this eternal realm of God, this realm of love. Love is eternal. God is love. This um place of love it, it's it, it's somewhere that we can go and have ex, um, revealed to us the dimensions the lengths and widths and depths and heights of this place this uh, eternal place let me read to you this scripture therefore we do not lose heart but though our outer man is decaying yet our inner man is being renewed day by day for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now I want you to keep in mind that there is this eternal uh, realm of God. We can't forget that when we're in the middle of trials and situations that are here in the earth. You know, we, we, for, we don't really have a good understanding of what eternity is and that we have eternity within us. And when we do, it changes the way we view the temporal. It just absolutely does. It changes the way we view love. It absolutely does. If we look at the timeline of, of what we're living in here on the earth, this time frame on earth, time, was, the world was created. Time has a beginning and it has an end, but the eternal realm has no beginning and it has no end. We've been thinking that we live on this earth, that we were created. We live for a dot, dot, dot. Oh no, time, it has a beginning and it has an end, but the eternal realm has no beginning 
and it has no end. That's something to think about. We um, have talked before about that scripture in Job that some think um, might mean that Job agreed to his trials in the eternal realm. You know, we were called before the foundation of the world. It says that the prophet was called a prophet before he entered his mother's womb. These are things we have to talk about, things we have to begin to think about. The eternal realm, not just being a dot, dot, dot to our life, but something even um, somewhere in that eternal realm we agreed. Maybe we agreed to some of the trials that we would go through on the earth on behalf of the kingdom of God, on behalf of Christ. Some of these trials, not all of them, some of them we bring on ourselves, but some of them, maybe, just maybe, like it says in Job, we agreed to them somewhere um, in this eternal realm. I had this experience um, several times, and I've talked about it in video blogs, where I experienced this eternal realm of love on multiple occasions, and I saw it as a house. I saw it as God's house, and God is love, and this is this beautiful house. And the Lord is revealing to me um, as I walk through this house, lights were being turned on and these were rooms that I thought that I had never been in. But as I went into the room, I noticed I'd been there before. I had no conscious memory of it, but I had been there before. And some of the uh, things that I would learn in love's home, I had agreed to learning somewhere in the eternal realm. And as the light was turned on to me within this temporal realm, as it was revealed to me, as the eternal was revealed to me in the temporal, I realized it was something I was actually excited to journey, regardless of what the trial might be. And I feel like it's a very important message right now that we can grab a hold of as we endure things in the temporal realm. But see, there's things that we had maybe agreed to and things that the Lord had called us to things that the Lord had called us to. I want to read to you something here. This little uh, notes and thoughts, uh, journal entry and Bible verses. It'll just take a quick moment, but it might be able to sort of pull this all together for you. Before I do, let me just encourage you that there is a great honor for where you've gone in the earth and the things that you've done. But let's start talking about eternity. Let's start talking about the eternal realm the realm of love, the realm of God's heart, this place, the sevenfold spirit of God, because where we're going in this new day, we're accessing something. We're accessing something in the kingdom of God, something in the Lord's heart that we weren't able to access before. It's going to make ministry within this temporal world dynamic and powerful, unlike we've seen before. It's not going to be something we can force or uh, fake our way through. It's going to be something that comes so easily because that eternal, that, that seed of God that's within us that Paul Keith has been preaching about for so long, that eternity within us, it's going to get cracked open. It's going to open up and we're going to begin to really move in this eternity that's within us. Wow. Even here on the earth, that's something to be thinking about. It's something to be processing. It's something to be asking God about. Do I agree to these somewhere? How do I get my mind away from the thoughts of the temporal and into the thoughts of the kingdom? Eternal thinking, kingdom thinking, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, a perfect realm of love that changes the way we view all the things we're afraid of on the earth when we start thinking kingdom. I'm going to read this to you now. In the eternal realm, just maybe, a chosen remnant agreed to their role on the earth that would manifest within the realm of time. We call the fulfillment of this agreement destiny. We were predestined by his foreknowledge, Romans 8, 29, to become conformed to the image of his son. Predestined, oh, called, justified, and glorified. There's an identity we have in Christ that we agreed to and was prepared for us before the foundation of the world. Remember, the scripture says that even the prophet was called a prophet before he entered his mother's womb. It's a destiny that goes beyond repentance and salvation, 
Beyond repentance and salvation, the word predestined means establish boundaries of limits or predetermine. In the Greek, it's a word which means to pre-establish boundaries before creation. Oh, chew on that one. Chew on that one. To pre-establish boundaries before creation. I'm going to read a verse here. This is Ephesians 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us. Ah, do you hear that? In the eternal realm of love, he predestined us. In the eternal realm of love, he pre-established the boundaries before creation. In love, he predestined us to live within these restraints of time for a time, to do a great work for his kingdom and encourage many, the remnant, to encourage a harvest to know him and to know their destiny and to know their identity, their identity, their destiny within the realm of time and their identity in the eternal realm. What an amazing thing. Let me go on in Ephesians 3. It says this, in all wisdom and insight, he may known to us the mystery of his will. These things we find in the heart of God, according to his good pleasure, which he set forth in him regarding his plan of the fullness of the times to bring all things together in Christ. Why did he do it? To bring all things together in Christ. That's why things in the heavens and things on the earth. Now let me tell you the word here heavens means the seat of order of things eternal. So that means he's going to bring, the purpose is to bring all things together in Christ things in the eternal realm, where the word heavens means things eternal, consummately perfect, where God dwells. Wow. So all things in the eternal realm where God dwells and for the purpose of all things on the earth. We have things to do in this timeline. And it's a, it's a destiny we have. We've been predestined for it, called and chosen before the foundation of the world. But there's also a, a massive identity in the realm of the spirit, in the eternal realm, in the realm of God, a massive identity. Something beautiful, something um, we chose even. The Lord knew our yes, you see. He knew that we would say yes. It's according to his foreknowledge. The seats of order of things eternal he set forth his plan of the fullness of the times to bring it all together in Christ. The unity of the faith and the true knowledge of God, which catapults us into our eternal identity. I had a vision recently. I saw um, many people holding on to the burdens of the temporal, the burdens, the fears, the anxieties, all of these things, holding on to them with a clenched fist. And there was a moment of release and I saw them be catapulted into their identity, into their uh, function in the realm of the spirit, catapulted into the eternal realm. You see, it's time to talk about eternity and there's a, a catapult of freedom when we begin to talk about eternity, when we begin to express eternity here on earth to a world that is very trapped in the temporal very trapped in the things that they ought to do, very trapped in, a, in a, a list of things that they want to get done, very trapped in fears and anxieties, very trapped. But when we start talking about eternity, there's an excitement where all of creation is excited and waiting to talk about eternity and to express the eternal realm here on the earth. Let me continue on. I'm almost done here. 
the unity of the faith and the true knowledge of God, which catapults us into our eternal identity. It's the identity placed within us and formed in righteousness. The very seed of God, Paul Keith talks about it all the time. And in that seed of God, as Paul Keith has described, it's in the, and the word shows us in Romans 1.20, his invisible, I'm sorry, let me try that again, his invisible attributes, his divine nature, and hear it, his eternal power. You see, in this day, something's being unleashed, something is being opened up within us, his eternal power. The design of our eternal call is found in this seed. By the revelation of the true knowledge of God, this seed is activated. An activation is a holy agreement with the order of all things eternal. You see, there's an agreement we're coming into with this conversation of eternity. This conversation of eternity. Our calling is more than fulfilling a destiny on the earth. It's a preparation for the age to come. In righteousness, which comes from God on the basis of faith in Christ, a remnant will know Him and the power of the resurrection in order that they may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Philippians 3, verse 9. Now I want to read to you one more verse. And this is massive. I feel like this is absolutely the word of the Lord for right now. As I honor you for what you've done in the earth, And I pray for you um, and prophesy over those with ears to hear uh, where you'll go in the realm of the Spirit and how you will bring that function here to the earth. Here it is in 1 Corinthians 2. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak Not in words taught by human wisdom, no, not things we find somewhere in the earth, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Ah, And we'll be able to bring to the earth these things, spiritual thoughts with spiritual words to minister to a very confused world, a very confused people. Minister the things of the kingdom. Start talking eternity. And um, we're going to see things shift. We are going to see it shift. I pray for you that you would have the spirit of understanding to grab a hold of these truths. And as you, um, you know, question and ponder some of these things, think about them. Think about it. It gets our thoughts off of the burdens of the temporal when we start talking eternal and we start talking about uh, that eternal power, that seed that's within us. Something happens and something shifts and there's a freedom where we can be catapulted into uh, um, our destiny here on the earth but into a revelation of our identity, the revelation of who we are in Him. I pray for you as you ponder these things and I bless you with your new day uh, accessing the realm of the Spirit and talking about eternity because it's time. In Jesus' name, I bless you.